Good evening. Good evening. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. How's everybody this evening? Well, it's good to have you here at St. John as we celebrate Christmas Eve 2021. Uh, welcoming everybody here in the sanctuary and those who are on Zoom and Facebook Live as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Uh, it's uh, good that we can all be together this evening. Um, one of the things as we begin this service, I want you to know that I recognize that uh, the holiday seasons, the Christmas season uniquely, is uh, a season of great joy, but it's also a season where uh, there's a lot of sorrow as well. It's, uh, I think I would call it the bittersweet season of the year, where we uh, are exploring a whole range of emotions and feelings, uh, and sometimes the feelings that we are experiencing uh, seem to disconnect with the joy of the season. And what I'm hoping this evening with uh, the worship service that we're doing is that each of you, in a unique way, will feel the movement of the Spirit in your life to uh, comfort you and to uh, uh, keep you, and that as we gather together to celebrate the birth of Christ, we will sense his presence not only today, but well into the future as well. And so with that, let's all rise as we're able. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Oh, come, let us adore him. We, he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Lord, Prince of Peace. Oh, come, let us adore him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. 
O God of love, you have brought us together this night and blessed us with your very self. Open our eyes to the light of Christ, which grows in the darkness of a world engulfed in apathy, pain, and loss. A world separated from you. Speak to us now that we may hear the good news of your salvation. Bring us into the wonder of your presence. Fill us with that light that we might be your light in the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to invite all of our young people to come forward so that we might share the Christmas story with one another. And we're just going to sit right here and I'll take a seat and be a brave soul. And if you're an adult and young at heart, come on up too. So let's see, I, I know some of these people. Is this Jordan? Did I remember that right? And I remember Lincoln, and you have to tell me your name. Lydia, and is this Anna here? Madeline. Madeline. and who is that? Audrey. Audrey, well we have five people, and you know what, I'm gonna have to ask you to come here because I need help for you to tell the story with me tonight. And who is a good reader and who could read the title of this book? Do you know what it says? The Good Nights. Good stories. And Lincoln, you think you could finish reading it? Come on over here so everybody can hear you say what the title of our book. According to Luke. To Luke. And then what does it say at the bottom of the page? Once upon a time. Do you think we could all say those words together? Would you do them with me? Here we go. Once upon a time. Lots of stories begin with those words. So, you know what? You're such a good helper there, Jordan. Could you help me open up the page here? Everybody can see it. And it says, how does our story begin? Once upon a time, there was a king. And he decided he needed to count all of the people using these numbers right here. Because he said, I need to collect taxes. And what do we see over here? Gold coins, so maybe they paid their taxes with gold coins. There were two special people in our story, and it begins with these words again. Once, there were two special people, and their names were Mary and Joseph. And they had to follow the king's orders. And the king said, well, because you belong to the house of David, you need to travel to Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is way over here. And here was a path and there was a donkey to help them travel there. And I'm going to ask, let's see, Lydia, could you feel this? Is this a smooth path or rough? A rough path, so it's not gonna to be too much fun for our friends, Mary and Joseph. Can you help me turn the page again, please? And as our story continues, of course, it starts with one. Upon a time. Well, when Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem, they saw a sign at the Bethlehem Hotel, and the Bethlehem Hotel sign said, no room. What are they going to do? But there was a friendly innkeeper who said, you know what, I don't have any room in my hotel, but you know what, you could go over to this stable 
And what do you see, friends, in this stable? Can you put your hand here? What is it? Or is it smooth or is it rough? It's rough. And you know what? We call that straw and hay because a stable is where animals would spend the night and often that's where they would be fed. Do you think you would like to stay in an animal barn when not really? But that's all that was left. Let's turn the page again and see what happens. Oh, our words are back. One. And Joseph had their baby. And they wrapped the baby in soft cloths. Can you feel those cloths and tell me how they feel? And what did they have to put the baby in? It's in straw. So we have very soft cloths around the baby, but a very rough bed. But the baby was healthy and was born. Oh, but our story continues. And what does it start with? Once upon a time. There were shepherds. And the shepherds were in the field taking care of their sheep, of course. And how many shepherds showed up this night? How many do you see in our picture? There are, t oh, there are three altogether. Good for you. And all of a sudden, when those shepherds were gathering together, what did the shepherds see in the sky? An angel. And then all of a sudden, lots of angels. And the angel says, don't be afraid because I've got good news for you. And of course, our good news begins with? Once upon a time. A baby is born for you, and that baby is going to be the savior of the world. And I want you to go and celebrate and visit that baby. So the shepherds went all the way to the stable and visited the young baby in the manger. And as they got there, of course, our story continues with... The first lullaby that the baby Jesus heard was from the animals. And it looks like there was a cow there. And what sound might a cow make? And what sound might a pig make? Boink. How about a donkey? Hee-haw, uh-huh. And how about a sheep? <laughs> oh, you guys are good. And how about a cat? Yes, can you imagine the scene, all of God's creatures singing a lullaby to the baby Jesus. Moo, oink, hee-haw, nay, da, cluck, all of those different sounds. But it was a glorious, glorious night. And that baby in the manger, did he come just for those shepherds? He came for, oops, it's gonna fall down. He came for you, and 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 he came for all of those people out there. So, some of these characters, Mary and Joseph and the king and the angels and the shepherds, you're going to see later on the screen. So keep your eyes open as the story continues. And now I have an assignment for you. Would you go back to where you came from and would you say, once upon a time, Jesus was born. Can you do that for me? Let's practice. Once upon a time, Jesus was born. Go to it, friends. First reading tonight comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6 to 7. We're going to read this responsibly. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness are men of For a child has been born for us. 
a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is made a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. And there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time on, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. Our second reading tonight comes from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, 
bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. I'm going to uh, invite you to stay seated for this portion of the service. Uh, we're going, I'm going to be reading uh, uh, from scripture and then you're going to respond by singing. And so uh, we'll have at it. You see, in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quinarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. And Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard as it had been to them.
Well, tonight, you know, we celebrate the birth of Christ, and it's, it's reasonable to imagine that all of the universe is part of this celebration, that everything in creation is sacred, is valued, has a purpose, and connects and interconnects with us and the world. The whole universe is connected. And maybe we can even feel that energy this evening. You know, you are part of that creation. And you are sacred as well. Each one of you is blessed beyond your wildest imagination and loved deeply by the very creator of all of us. Every person in the world is of overwhelming value. And each of us, in our own ways, has special gifts to receive and to share with others. Each of us is uniquely broken as well. We need different things to become whole. And it is this story of the birth of Christ who shares the great shalom with the world that sets the stage for this possibility for each of us. It's a great vision. It's part of your life. The opportunities are endless to give and to receive God's love every day in every context of our lives. The challenge is, and God will often say it, Jesus would say it all the time, be not afraid. Take that next step out. You are worthy of it. The world is worthy of it. Go for it. And in tonight's story, we see all the principles uh, had been given that very statement, be not afraid. Mary was given it. Be not afraid. There's something more for you. Your life is going to unfold in a very powerful way. Joseph received the same uh, statement, be not afraid. You too will be part of a story that has the potential to change the world. Then, of course, the shepherds, all the shepherds, they're visited, and they are told, be not afraid. There's a reason for you to be here this evening. And so the story this evening, a story that you've heard many times, it's, uh, it takes place in a, in a, uh, a stable. And uh, if we try to look at it in modern terms, the stable would be the equivalent of a, an attached garage, okay? So, and, and, and the, the attached garage and, and the wall that would be connected to the home would be a half wall. So you could be standing in the stable, looking into the living area, back and forth. This was the stable. Now, Mary and Joseph, were able to stay in that stable. And Mary was able to give birth there. And one of the reasons they were able to do that was because the sheep that would have been in that stable were out about a mile and a half in the fields with shepherds that were nominally paid by the owners of the homes to take care of those sheep. It was a time of the year where the sheep just stayed out to pasture for days on end. And so there was at least some sort of a space. And then we see something happen that's just amazing. A mile and a half down the road, up a hill a little bit, shepherds are tending sheep, and all of a sudden they are visited. They are told about the fact that there was a baby born who is the Mashiach, the Messiah, who will change the world. And you have an assignment. You, you are to go back to uh, Bethlehem and see this child and his parents and confirm to them what we have just told you so that they will recognize that, yes, 
This has now taken place. And so the shepherds do it. They go back in. They see Mary and Joseph and the baby, and they declare everything that they had heard from the angel. And this completes that circle of basic understanding by the parents that, yes, in fact, our son is the Savior. And each one of these people, before they did what they had to do, were, were be not afraid. There's something more for you to do. Well, that baby grew up. And uh, he was known as Jesus of Nazareth. He came from a long line of prophets that preached the peace. And of course, he was more than just a prophet, but he preached the peace. He, he came into a world where most of the people in Palestine were profoundly poor, barely having enough to eat working very hard, but being taken advantage of. They lived a life of shame, and Jesus came into the world and said, you are not shame, you are valuable, you are part of God's creation, there's more, there's more, and we will keep working on trying to make this right, but there is nobody in the world that deserves to live a life of shame. He taught compassion. He taught forgiveness. A hard thing for people to do. He, one of his, one of his disciples uh, had a hard time with somebody one day, and he, he forgave the guy, but it was so hard. He said, how many times do I have to forgive this guy? Seven times? And Jesus said, no, 70 plus seven times. You never stop forgiving. It's part of love. It's part of an affirmation. Jesus fought for those who were oppressed. He challenged those with great wealth who were taking advantage of those who were oppressed to change their ways. And you know, some people did, but not all. The challenge in God's creation, folks, is this, that God works specifically through people. Do I, do we hear the message? Do we accept the fact that God does love all people and that we have a unique responsibility and ministry that we, by our very existence, can become a type of a Christ child for others who have great needs? Do we understand that we are loved beyond the bounds of our imagination and that it's okay to open our arms and receive help, to ask for help, that there are people in the world that are willing to give us help if we're willing to admit the need? Shalom is a powerful source. It's a powerful force. It was what Jesus stood for. And each one of us this evening has a chance to experience it in a whole new way. Every week I preach about shalom, various dimensions of it. But maybe tonight, one dimension of shalom that is worthy of consideration for all of us is the gift of forgiveness. To recognize that there may be times when we need to forgive ourselves. That God invites us to forgive ourselves. That we are worthy of love. We are worthy of that. Maybe there are people in our lives that we struggle with, just like the disciple. And that struggle literally robs our joy. It takes away from all of the relationships in our life, and it just, it's like a rusty nail. God doesn't want us to hold on to that. 
God is cheering us on to let go of that. And so maybe this Christmas, it would be worthy to unpack that unique gift, the gift of forgiveness, and see just what it may do. The gift of God's love is always available to each of us. God expects us to become God's hands and feet. And so it's my profound hope that all of us will open that gift of God's love and to accept it freely and to dream big dreams of the possibilities of a world that is filled with this love and to take those steps in whatever field of work we're in and declare that yes, Christ is born and we, with he, can make the world new. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Love proclaims that a Savior has been born to us. Inspire your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all who seek salvation, hope, and new life. Lord, in your mercy, Love whispers to a weary world that the time for rest and restoration has come. Maintain healthy cycles of wake and sleep for all creatures. Where pollution disrupts natural rhythms, encourage new practices. Lord, in your mercy. Love cries to a warring world that the time for peace is at hand. Direct those in power who make decisions on behalf of others, that they nurture and sustain all that is healthy, good, and holy. Lord, in your mercy. Love sings through the wails of a newborn baby. Respond to all who cry out in pain, despair, or need this night. Bring comfort to those for whom separation, grief, or loss makes the Christmas season especially difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Love murmurs words of comfort to a newborn child and exhausted parents. Pour out your love upon families of every kind. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you. Confident of your grace and love, made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace and light of the Christ child be with you always. And now is when you can greet each other with the sign of peace as, as you are able. That's peace. Merry Christmas. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas. With you. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Peace be with you.
rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have been blessed, have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessings for others. With the trees of the field, with the earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the love the God whom we cannot see. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in singing, glory to the newborn King. night of his life, Jesus gathered his disciples in an upper room in downtown Jerusalem, recognizing that soon he would no longer physically be with them. He sensed their anxiety and their fear and their concern for what the future might hold. He looked at each of his disciples and confirmed to them the fact that each of them were uniquely gifted 
to take the message of peace forward into a world that desperately needed it. And so before supper began, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to each of his disciples, and he said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. And after the supper had been completed, he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. We know that with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we are able to become his hands and feet for a world that desperately needs such love. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given.
May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and keep you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God. Hmm?